Members, are, we're at seven o'clock. Thank you. Well, good evening, members, officers, visitors, and members of the public. I'm Councillor Tim Gibson, and I'll be chairing this evening's meeting. The meeting will be recorded, and proceedings will be conducted in accordance with the Council's constitution, including procedure rules, which are available on the Council's website. There's no planned evacuation drill this evening, and accordingly, if the alarm sounds, it is to be treated as a genuine need to evacuate. I think everyone here this evening is well aware of the evacuation procedures. If there's anybody that isn't, I would like me to run through them. And is there anybody that would need any assistance? Should we have an emergency? OK, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Could I ask you to raise your hand just a little higher, please, Councillor Nets? Thank you. My eyesight's not what it used to be. Uh, we'll ensure that you're assisted. Thank you. Uh, the meeting has a quasi-judicial role and determines the rights and obligations of the applicant. Members must consider each applicant and everything that is said in the meeting concerning the application and make their decision based solely on their planning judgment of the information which is available to them. Following a decision by members, delegated authority is given to the planning officer to issue the decision notice. Planning permission is not granted until the issue of that decision notice. Any member of the council who is not a member of the planning committee may attend as a visiting member and may speak, having given prior notification. Such visiting members may of course include ward members, and whilst visiting members can speak on an application, they are not permitted to vote. Any member acting as a substitute on the planning committee must have undertaken appropriate training before doing so. Members must remain in the meeting for the whole time that each item is being debated and should not vote on that item unless they have done so. We only have um, one public speaker booked in this evening, but uh, my understanding from Democratic Services um, is that he's unlikely to be able to join us. Um, but I will remind uh, our visiting member this evening that you have three minutes to speak and an audible warning of time will be given when there are 30 seconds remaining. The meeting this evening will now follow the order set out in the agenda. However, I will amend the order if there's good reason for doing so. We now move on to um, item one, which is apologies for absence and any substitutes, please. Um, I have apologies for Councillor Bonney and substitutes Councillor Knight and apologies for James Hall. Thank you. Uh, now we move on to item two, which is to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of August 2021 um, as a correct record. Members. Thank you, members. Uh, item three, uh, I now invite members declarations of disclosable pecuniary interests. OK, I don't see any and disclosable non pecuniary interests. OK, members, thank you very much. So we now move on to um, item four, which is to consider the attached head of planning report parts uh, two, three uh, and five. And the first item uh, is item 2.1, which is 20 oblique 503 665 oblique full. And this is 86 to 100 West Street, Sittingbourne. And um, I'd like to invite our planning officer now to give us a summary and uh, any updates, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Jim Wilson speaking. I'll just try and share my screen for you, first of all. Right, hope, hopefully you can see that. That's um, that's a view of the front and side of of the development. I've actually got a short update for members as well. Um, further to the report, uh, delegated authority has sought to impose two additional conditions. One, to limit the operating hours of the proposed commercial unit so that it can operate after 11 p.m. So that it cannot. Apologies. Can you hear operate. us, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me, Chairman? We, we can't seem to hear you, Mr. Wilson. Oh. I'll, 
Can you hear me now? Uh, uh, I just turned the mic, turn microphone on and off. No. Yeah, that's no? fine. We can we can hear you now loud and clear. Thank you. All right. Good. All right. Sorry. Good. I was, sorry. I was. I was just half. 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 Anyway, anyway. Um, delegated authority has sought to impose two additional conditions. One, to limit the operating hours of the proposed commercial unit so that it can operate, cannot operate after 11 p.m. or before 7 a.m. on any day. And a second, to prevent overlooking from the balconies to units 5 and 11 by requiring the provision of obscure glazed screens to the side balconies facing Frederick Street. With regard to the conditions on page 26 of the agenda, Members will note that there is an error with the numbering. Two of the reasons for conditions have been numbered as if they were separate conditions. As such, the total number of conditions is actually two fewer than the numbering in the report suggests. In conclusion, officers remain of the view that planning permission should be granted subject to conditions as set out in the report and with the two additional condi conditions, as I just mentioned, and to the signing of a suitably worded section 106 agreement. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is, is there anything else you'd like to um, give us as part of the outline, Mr Wilson, at this stage or not? Um, well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, everything else is as per the report. I mean, I mean, certainly in terms of what's proposed, it's 20 flats, a mix of one, two and a single three bed unit and 77 square metres of commercial floor space on the gr on the ground floor and as set out in the report, um, officers are very much of the view that it's an appropriate um, development for this site uh, um, on the edge of Sittingbourne Town, Town Centre and hence the recommendation that planning permission be granted. Um, obviously happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Thank you. Could I now invite uh, Councillor Glyn Whelan please to speak on this item as the ward member? Thank you, Chair. Um, I have to disagree with some of the remarks made in this report. I agree instead with the views expressed by the police, some Sittingbourne, Sittingbourne Society and some local residents. A four storey block, which you can see on the screen there now, replacing a single storey car and motorcycle repair workshop and an office is bound to have an effect on the area, notably Frederick Street, which consists of terraced Victorian two-storey housing. The present single-storey housing is set back 12 metres from the A2. The new four-storey block is built right up to the boundary, leaving only the width of the pavement between the A2 and the four-storey block which can be seen there on the screen. The fourth story is effectively trying to squeeze a quart into a pint pot. Residents have complained about the lack of parking in the proposal and its impact on an area, notably Frederick Street, Arthur Street and Gibson Street, all of which have problems already. In power eight six of the report, it clearly states that the proposed scale and bulk of the development is significantly larger than the existing arrangement. Paragraph 7 of the report further clarifies this by stating the Sittingbourne Town Centre and Milton Creek SPD states the scale of the development should respond to the surrounding buildings and thus be primarily three storeys, except for alongside the railway line at the northern distant end of Cockleshell Walk. Discussions in 2019 and 2020 resolved that parking should not be restricted to a maximum of one parking space per one or two bedroom units we should ensure a minimum of one space per unit. This has not been achieved here and will exacerbate an already fraught situation. In para 710 of the report, it notes that the police have expressed concern about the lack of parking and in 64, 
the response from the Singbourne Society opposing the application accurately reflects the situation and the hope that the council will refuse permission until adequate parking space has been found. Where the report refers to travel modes, I assume it refers to all types of transport. Road and rail. That's your three minutes, right, Councillor okay. Thank you. I now move the officer recommendation. Could I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Jays. Uh, members. Yeah, Councillor Palmer, please. Yes, thank you. I think we're all familiar with that site as we drive through. And I do feel sometimes it is an ideal site. It's for development, but I do concur with what the, the ward council has brought up, particularly with the height of the building, the four storeys, and the impact on the A2 with the pedestrians being so close to it, being forced in, in, into the roadway. Um, so I do have concerns and I also feel that he's highlighted very well the issues with parking where it could be two cars per flat. It, it is it is a thing uh, and, and, and at least we need to increase some of the parking or ensure that there's adequate parking there. And we need to take on board the concern as the ward member highlighted from Kent Police and others. So at the moment I've got an open mind, but I do I do have concerns about the height of it. Um, and I, I, I do feel that the parking issue should be reassessed and looked at, but I'd like to hear some of the arguments either for or against. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hunt, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I obviously listen to, to what's been said and looking in the report, I do understand the parking concern, um, but it does meet the standards that we've set and we've recently adopted those parking standards. So for us to be able to say that actually this isn't going to work for parking, we've got, we haven't got a leg to stand on basically. Um, it is in the town centre, you're around the corner from the station and it, we sort of understand that there is going to be building coming forward um, that doesn't have enough spaces of what we would normally be used to, but it, it meets all that criteria. For the height of the buildings, I'm just looking at the moment at Google Maps and right opposite on this, the other corner, um, we've got a four storey block of flats. So it, in the design terms, it meets, and we, we can see we've got images in front of us, both of those, you can see the four storey block of flats on the other side of the road. So we can't be saying that it's not in keeping with the area as well. Um, I think maybe there is other areas where over, overlooking especially when you're talking about cockle shell walk you've, you're backing onto properties there and height may be an issue but in this case i don't think it is um i think that the design of it is is good um you see the entrance to the town center the urban design officer has made some comments and there's been changes that the developer has done i think mean, they've done work on that and there's been a lot of consideration with that um the actual site itself now is a mess and having something like this there is going to be an improvement and give us housing that we we need in the town centre. So I can see no reason why we should uh, not look at uh, approving this. Thank you. Councillor Winkless, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not going to repeat what's already been said, but I would just like to add I have grave concerns about the height of the building. I think four storeys um, in that location is too high and also I have concerns about which I think the Ward Council brought up about the parking aspect of it. I will listen to the rest of the debate before I make my mind up but I do have grave concerns after listening to the Ward Councillor um, which way I'm going to go with this. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Dender please. Thank you Chair. Um, yes on the height uh, Councillor Hunt has mentioned the which you can see there in the background the four storey flats but a little further up, of course, is a church and the top of the uh, proposed building is actually the same height as the tower of the church. I don't know if we have something showing that, which is that that gives you the wrong impression there because of the hang up. You can see the church, but actually it's on the same height. If you stand next to it. Um, I've got a question, though. Well, two questions, really. One is I notice on the parking area there are two charging points well two twins I think 
maybe you could clarify that. Which, um, looking to the future, is that enough? Also, are they fast charging points or the normal domestic? Um, because with this kind of situation, where you have 15 spaces, they'll all be clamouring for those four charging points. If they're going to take all night to charge, you can imagine what's going to happen. So I'd, I'd like a comment on the charging points, if you would. Also on the roof, I notice on the design um, officer's comments uh, that the garden on the roof is just one part, but he's quite surprised, he or she is quite surprised that the other flat roofs are not sedum as well. They're not green as well. They've just been left bare. So maybe a comment on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilson, can you help us on that? Um, yeah, thank, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just on the charging points, um, condition number, had it just now, 31 on page 29. Um, there will be a charging point for each dwelling in accordance with details to be submitted and approved by the local planning authority. So yeah, there'll, ultimately there'll be one charging per point to go with. Well, it says each dwelling, but but obviously it'll be one per space because we haven't got we haven't got a parking space for each of the dwellings. Um, just to clarify on the on the parking and whether it's appropriate or not. Um, just I mean, mention was made of Kent Police and Sittingbourne Society. I think that Councillor Hunt made the key point on the parking, which is rather than what Kent Police or Sittingbourne Society might think about parking, which, you know, whilst we take their comments seriously, um, the key thing is our adopted SPD on car parking, which in sustainable um, central locations like this um, points us towards accepting less than one parking space. And also that um, our colleagues at Kent Highways um, have raised no objection. Um, I think that's it's important to keep that in mind. Um, in terms of the roof, um, there's potentially um, scope to amend what happens with with the roof and I'll just see if I can um, get the right drawing. Um, it's taken a, a moment to open. Well, more than a moment. Um, not quite sure why that's um, partly opened and and then refused to completely open. Um, no, it won't let me shut it, which is irksome. I think the, I think the point is there's potential for officers to explore um, with with the the applicant if um, if the planning committee decide to approve the application, the scope for the remaining areas of the roof to be to be planted up. Um, there are there are several options in this regard. One of them see them. Um, one of them is um, potentially something slightly more ambitious in terms of looking for a sort of better better range of plants. I mean, sedum is just the easiest and sort of potentially the cheapest way of doing it, but it's possible to have, say, a wildflower meadow. I mean, it wouldn't need it wouldn't need a deep layer of soil, and it's kind of you know technically I think it's quite possible to do it. It's just that um, often developers are, are wary of doing it. But yeah, I mean, if members were to give delegation um, to pursue that, then yeah, I'm sure that the case officer and I would, you know, we would happily try and do that and get try and get more of the roof um, to be planted up, and that could potentially be in agreed in conjunction with um, with with the chairman um, and also with the ward member. Um, I hope that's been of some help. And apologies for the drawing not opening. Yes, it has. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Clark, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I have to, um, and I find myself in unfamiliar territory, I agree with a lot of what Councillor Hunt has said. Um, as much as I'd like to be able to turn this application down um, for the height um, and for the parking, um, I can find no reason actually to do so. Um, as is said, there is the four storey uh, Wingate Court um, on the opposite corner of Afton Lane. Um, I do question the design though. Um, 
to me, that looks like a mini version of Swale House. Um, and we know what an ugly building this is. Um, I am struggling. I'm torn between whether to turn, you know, refuse this or or approve it. Mm. Difficult. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Beard, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Dendor somewhat stole my thunder. Mine was about the charging points. Um, although I am happy to second Councillor Clark's proposal to demolish Swale House, if that was. Um, but on condition 31, and it has been alluded to by the officer, I really do think that needs to be amended because the wording of that is completely unachievable because it says that a charging point has to be provided for each of the dwellings. Well, there's 15 spaces for 20 properties. It's the, the No developer in the world is going to be able to achieve that unless they're going to put a couple of charging points stuck to a wall that no one's going to be able to use. So I, I think that needs tidying up. But um, that that was my point because I loaded the parking drawer in and it does show that only parking spaces one to four have actually been provided with electric charging points. Okay. Mr Wilson, would you like to comment further? Agreed. Um, that's a very helpful intervention and um, with, with hindsight, um, that's what I should have said when I had the opportunity to to say it. So yeah, I'd, I'd seek delegation to to um to make that amendment to condition 31, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Councillor Stephen, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate that uh, 20 dwellings and 15 car parking spaces is is what the norm is nowadays. But where are the other five going to park to start off with? And uh, it's I can't see on the diagram. Uh, it only shows. It doesn't show 15 parking spaces there. Uh, I'd just like to know where the other parking spaces are. And uh, the the grass, or would they say the, the garden roof, um, that again is going to be another story higher than the four stories and will definitely be overlooking Frederick Street and other sur surrounding places. Is there any screening around that area to prevent this? Or can they, someone standing in that uh, garden area at the top uh, oversee all the other houses around. Um, just shall I respond to those points, Chairman? Yes, please, Mr. Wilson. Yeah. I'm mean, just on the parking. Four of um, eleven of the spaces are on the plan I've loaded up, and the other four are under Croft, and they're underneath um, the wing of the building that projects towards Frederick Street. Um, just whilst I've got this this um, plan, which shows the the roof. Um, the roof garden area is the central part of the southern um, elevation facing West Street. Um, and well, yes, I mean, by nature of it, people will be stood on the roof, um, but they're they're a reasonable distance away from, um, I would say, from um, the cartilage of the of, of, of the nearest property. Um, I mean, and the arc, I mean, the. The point about screening. I mean, if if members were particularly um, concerned about then about that, then then where does the will as a way? Certainly, but but then depending on what type the screening would would take, there would be a there would potentially be some additional visual impact to that. Um, so it's it's kind of a, it's it's sort of a judgment about how often people are they're going to be up there and and. Whilst there's some limited scope for overlooking, it's you know it's whether you, whether members felt that was harmful enough to um, to to warrant warrant sort of seeking to make an an amendment to to incorporate some screening. Um, I think that's that's pro I mean officers haven't sort of offered it up because we didn't take the view that it was that it was necessary. But if members were to disagree, then as with the two other points, we could we could take delegation to to negotiate a solution to that. Councillor Stephen. Yeah, I mean, with height comes advantage, doesn't it? I mean, it's a, to get the high point in any any situation, you've got the advantage of, of sight and irrespective of how close they are, and they are close. You can see that already by, you know, by the drawing that the houses back onto that. So virtually the whole of Frederick Street will be under the sight of anyone up in that garden, which is you know, I think is is in, incorrect. It's not 
not giving them any privacy whatsoever. Thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor Clark. Yeah, thank you for your indulgence, Mr Chairman. It's just a question I forgot to ask when I was speaking just now. Um, Mr Wilson, um, is it yourself or a different case officer that was working with the applicant on the design of this building? Um, just a quick question. Is that the best design you could get the applicant to come up with? Um, I, I, I was to involve, involved to some extent. I mean, the case officer, um, the, the, the case officer was, officer was central in the process. As I say, I was involved and our urban design um, officer was involved. I mean, I've, I've, I've got to say, and it's, I, although I think the, the 3D view that I've just put up gives, gives a sort of, you know, some idea of what it will look like. I, um, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't necessarily sort of, you know, sometimes people are slightly surprised how, think how good things look when they're, um, when they're actually built. I've, I, th I think to compare it with Swale, ha Swale House is, um, I don't think it's, it's correct. I mean, if you look at, if, the, if you look at the amount of, you know, there's a variety of use of materials, there's, there's balconies to break up various parts of the elevations there's on the on the front elevation it isn't just one monolithic straight straight line as you can see it's in there's basically four different bits with where the where the elevation is broken up and some bits are slightly further forward and some bits are recessed um it's not all brick there's there's several bricks there's small areas of, of cladding there's you know there's a good level of of sort of windows on on the elevation so so yeah, I mean, you know, most people agree that the Swale House is is per design and was probably even per design when it was built. But by by, I don't think it's, you know, my professional judgment would be that it's um, it's not a, not a fair comparison with with this building, which I think will be a good addition to the town. Councillor Valentine, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, there are two issues I want to raise. Um, one on the on the parking going back to the car charges um, members will remember that we recently gave permission for a care home at um, Perry Court in Faversham and there was a condition that they should provide two car charges in that car park that care home opened recently so I went to have a look at the car charges and I was very disappointed to see they've managed to f source 3.6 kilowatt car charges um, I didn't know these were still on the market. They're really no better than plugging the car into your three pin plug at home. It will take 12 hours for a car to charge. So could I ask that we amend the condition on electric car chargers to require a minimum of seven kilowatt, which is normal for a domestic installation. Um, and then the other issue I want to turn to are eight uh, point one six on page 19 of the agenda um, there's a paragraph about air quality and the uh, input from the air quality team um, and that says that this development would therefore warrant an air quality assessment it's it's saying there's a danger with the um, relatively high building of creating an urban canyon um, which is a particular problem that causes poor air quality in urban areas um, and it says that the development would therefore warrant an air quality assessment whereby the environmental health manager is satisfied that this can be dealt with by condition. I'm sure it's my reading of it, but I can't find the condition that's mapping onto that. So, sorry, 19 is it? Thank you. Um, and a general comment, I mean, I, I take the comments about parking and um, the height of the building, but I do think that um, with the demands on the borough, the way we have to go is to put relatively high density housing into sustainable areas. And being near the only tier one settlement in the borough, um, this is one of the most sustainable areas. Um, and because it's a sustainable area, we don't necessarily need um, uh, a high provision of parking. And to an extent, the more parking places we provide, the more cars there will be associated with this development, and we want to reduce the number of cars. But my question will be there, is the parking allocated? So will some people buy a flat with a parking place and some people not have a parking place? Or will it be that the parking is unallocated and um, therefore I think we're more likely to get 
20 cars looking for 15 parking spaces. Um, if I can. Yes, of course. Chairman. Yeah. I mean, just starting with the um, the vehicle charging points, um, but I can't see an amend a problem personally with with making a further amendment to condition 31 to to make sure we get them at least to that minimum specification. Um, to, on whether the parking spaces are allocated, um, as things stand, they wouldn't be allocated, but it's possible um, to impose an additional condition to require um, a condition to a, a strategy for car parking management to be submitted so that that can be that problem, that potential issue can be um, can be resolved at this point. Like, for example, um, the, it might it would be possible to use the condition to say that um, the units that didn't get a space would be the, the one bedroom ones and that the two bedroom flats and a single three bedroom flat would get a space. If that makes sense. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And Councillor Dendor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just following that before I go to my last question, um, I, I take Councillor Antine's point. Um, looking at the turning circles of those cars in that area, if you get them all scrambling for spaces and cars coming in trying to get in, I can see one heck of a mess. So I would agree that you've got to do something that people are restricted knowing they won't get one in there so they don't try and get in there and block everybody up. So I, I do see an issue there. Um, my last question was visibility displays. I noticed one of the one or two of the residents mentioned it and maybe just a question to Mr Wilson. Um, both on the Hawthorne Road corner, which of course at the moment you can quite clearly see traffic coming up the A2 if you want to turn right uh, because of the uh, garage there. You can see see straight across the corner and also opposite on the St Michael's Road corner uh, where there is a pedestrian crossing right around that corner. So if you come dashing down there and you can't see across the corner that somebody is about to cross or particularly if the lights are broken, um, then it could cause a danger. So I just wonder if Mr Wilson's got a comment on that. Um, there's sort of the overarching comment is that that's that's they're both adopted roads, so it's a it's a point for um, KCC Highways who kind of who've looked at this and were quite heavily involved and have provided comments confirming that they've got no objection. Um, in terms of the, I mean, I've put that plan back up that I think sort of um, sort of I, I think it's helpful. If you look carefully, you can see the the traffic lights of the pedestrian crossing. Um, just behind that lorry, just sort of immediately beyond um, the site. But you can see them as you come down. You know, I'm not not a highway engineer. I definitely wouldn't claim to be. But you'll, you'll be able to see, if you're that black car in the foreground, you'll be able to see them as you drive down past the site. You'll still be able to see that there's a, there's a pedestrian crossing and that you need to be gearing up for potentially shop at stopping. Um, and the same coming in similarly coming out of Hawthorne Road onto joining the A2. I mean, you're still the development's still going to be set, although it's quite close to the um, the pavement line. It's obviously still going to be set back behind the pavement. So I think the assessment that KCC Highways will have made is that that that's that, that the safety there isn't going to be um, impinged upon by this development. OK, thank you. Members, I don't see anybody else. Ah, oh, sorry, apologies, Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll keep it as brief as I can. So first and foremost, I can't see anything that would stand up at appeal to refuse it on, bluntly. So that, that's the difficulty. In terms of parking, if there's going to be allocated parking, the first two flats that are going to lose it will be the affordable units. Straight off the bat, that is what the developer will do. That will make it more difficult to get a uh, affordable housing company to take them on. So I would reckon that we'll probably end up with a commuted sum off this, not the two flats, realistically. But I think that's what we're going to get. Uh, so I know it's disappointing, but again, it's not reason enough. Uh, and I would 
ask that we do pursue in the interest of biodiversity the wildflower option on part of the roof at the very least let's get the best we can okay thank you right members we'll um take this one to the vote then those in favor of the officer's recommendation those against three against abstentions please two abstentions yeah, so it's ten four three against and two abstentions so uh, permission is granted subject to amendments to uh, the conditions and uh, the delegations uh, as discussed Thank you, members. Um, we now move on to item uh, 2.2. Two. And this one is um, 2.1 oblique 503916 oblique full. And it's the Clock Tower, High Street, Sheerness, Kent. And I thank you also for an introduction and a quick summary, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, in terms of an update, um, a very minor update to give members. Um, we've received a consultation response from Natural England who have no comments to make on the application, unsurprisingly. Um, in terms of the, um, the actual application itself, um, members will recall that um, an application for listed building consent was reported to committee at the end of July um, and approved for the um, renovation work to the clock tower. Um, that work involves dismantling the clock tower, taking it away from the site um, to be restored um, and then being brought back to the site um, and resurrected. Um, those works um, were also determined to require planning permission, um, hence why um, we have this second application now, um, which is actually for the, the, the planning consent itself. Um, in terms of the development, um, this is the existing clock tower um, drawings at the moment. Um, members will see that there are some, some arms that used to support old gas lanterns. Um, and members will also see that the clock tower is primarily coloured in blue and red. Uh, the proposal is to, as well as to um, uh, uh, restore the clock tower and to repair um, various elements um, of the structure that have corroded um, and to also carry out restoration works to the, the clock itself. Um, externally, um, the um, additional works um, are to um, reinstate lanterns onto the building and to reinstate the colours of the clock tower um, that would have been in place when it was originally constructed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I move the official recommendation. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Jays. Members, any comments, observations? Councillor Winkless. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to say I'm 100% behind this. I can't see we've got any reason to turn this down. Um, an improvement to the clock tower will help enhance, in my opinion, the area of Sheerness. So I should be supporting the officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bert, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, again, I support this wholeheartedly, endorse the officer's report, um, and I hope the whole committee does, because the work started on Monday. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hunt, please. Thanks. Um, I've got a concern. I think we should go back to the original gas lamps itself. LED, but on, on the LED, I, I do just think obviously LED lights can be very, very bright. And I know obviously it is a concern that's that's happened in the past with LED and residents saying they are so bright. I just think with a, a listed building going back to trying to get to a, something original, obviously LED lighting is the way we should go, but we could end up with really bright lights on there looking out of keeping. Um, so I don't know whether it would be a case of having a, an additional condition just to get the details of the lighting to be submitted um, so they can just keep an eye on that it's just just so it's uh, in keeping a bit more of a softer glowing light 
as it were. Okay. Thank you, Jim. I think, I think you find you find that you can get soft lighted LED with very low lumens, and uh, and I've got them in my garden anyway. We're not as big as that, but it's two different types. As you say, there's the bright lights, and then you can get the soft lights, and uh, the, the soft lighting will be far more suitable for this than anything like the bright LEDs you see on some cars, even. Mr. Burn, is that something you would need to condition or? Well, it would be possible to um, condition details of external lighting. Um, members may also want to consider that this is, of course, a council development um, and as a responsible authority, I'm sure that the project team will want to ensure that um, soft lights, um, appropriate lighting is installed. But, it, but, but, but in planning terms, it is possible to impose a condition to require those details if members see fit. Councillor Hunt. I'll ask to have every faith. Um, I think it's better to condition it so we know we are clear and it is done. So, okay. <laughs> so I'll propose that if it needs a proposal. Seconded by Councillor Stephen. Those in favour? Those against? Abstentions? That's unanimous. I know we'll come back to the substantive vote. Those in favour of the officer recommendation uh, as amended under conditions? Yep. Those against? And abstentions? Members, two of you haven't voted. Yes, indeed. Sorry. C Councillor Valentine voted and shouldn't have because he was out of the room during the officer's update. Yeah. Okay. Point taken. We'll take, we'll take the vote again, please. Those in favour? Those against? And abstentions? Thank you. So members, that's that's carried. Just we now move on to item uh, two three, please. And. This one is 21 oblique 503353 oblique full, and it's 12 Kingsford Drive, East Church, Sheerness, Kent. Well, thank you so far. Um, a summary and any updates, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, there's no update for members. Um, if you just bear with me whilst I load up the drawings and the photos. OK, so this is a application for a first floor extension above existing garage and um, connect connecting link to the main house, which is in this location here. Uh, the proposal is for a um, full two story extension. This is the existing drawings which show the single story garage and link at present. And uh, let's find the elevation. Here we go. Here's the elevation which shows the first floor extension. Uh, members will see that uh, the extension will provide a, a bedroom above the garage um, with a dressing room area. The garage has been, the um, extension has been designed so that there are no windows in this elevation here, the um, northeast facing elevation, uh, nor the southwest facing elevation to avoid direct overlooking into neighbouring properties. Uh, there's a, a, a pair of doors and a Juliet balcony in this elevation here, which essentially look um, look north and windows in the front elevation which would face out into the road. Um, if I just show the block plan to members again you'll see if I just show you this there's no windows here facing towards number six uh, Kerry Close here or in the southern elevation the windows face in this direction 
and this direction. And in terms of pictures, so this is the existing property here with um, the single story garage. Um, it's quite a common feature within uh, the uh, local estate um, where you have large detached dwellings um, and uh, garages of relatively varying heights attached to them, um, different positions. This one is at the end of a cul-de-sac, um, relatively discreetly located. And that's the neighbouring property on the other side. And at the back, this is the this is the garage here um, where the first floor will be erected and the neighbouring property um, faces indirectly. Um, uh, it doesn't face directly towards the, the garage itself. It faces at an angle um, across the mainly across the other side of this dwelling um, and down the, the back of its own garden. I can show you that again on the block plan. So as you can see there, this property is orientated in this direction. So the extension will be slightly off at an angle from the, the main view out of the property. Thank you. Thank you. I move the officer recommendation. Could I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Jays. Members? Councillor Dender, please. Yes, just a question, really. There was a mention on one of the objectors about lighting on the soffits, um, but I couldn't see anything in the application about that lighting, which can you maybe clarify? Yes, you're correct, Councillor. There's no information in the application itself um, that refers to any external lighting, so I'm not entirely sure where the objector has received that information. Um, we did consider um, obviously the points that they've made, but taking into account that this is within a, a, a local built up estate, um, we didn't feel that there was anything particularly unusual um, about the potential for any lighting to be installed on the extension. Um, and the majority of householders can can do that without the need for any form of planning permission or control. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Burt, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Personally, I think this is awful. I think it's a bad design. Um, I think it's not in keeping with the rest of the estate. However, it is slowly becoming in keeping with the rest of the estate because despite this estate having a restrictive covenant on it that is supposed to pre prevent this type of development, it simply doesn't because it doesn't meet any sort of standards and it's not worth the paper it's written on. Now, I know that we've refused similar applications in the past that have gone to appeal and we've lost. Um, the one on Hustlings Drive sticks in my mind because that one was right slap bang on the main estate road that was completely out of keeping and every single car that coming onto the estate would see it. Um, similarly, we had the one in Leak Close that went, it came in, was refused, came in again, was refused and then went to appeal and they won. I do, however, think this one, being that it's at the end of the cul-de-sac and out of the way, it is less intrusive than those two that I've just mentioned. However, I still think it's going to be something that we're going to be plagued with for years to come, because for some reason these houses built as five, six, seven bedroom and they still need to be made eight, nine, ten bedroom. Um, again, I think it's poor design, but it, we are where we are. Thank you for that. Members, anybody else? Councillor Dender, please. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I tend to agree with Councillor Beer. When you look at the block like that, I mean, it, it does look obtrusive, but when you look at the placement at the end of the cul-de-sac, it doesn't actually, it's not actually out of keeping with the ones around it. Um, I don't know if you can put that picture up with the garage on the, which side is it? The other side. Um, the front view, sorry. With the red roofed. Uh, no, the other one. That one. I mean, if you look at the roof of that garage there, it's almost at the top of the, uh, towards the roof of that house anyway. So it's not really that unobtrusive in that setting. It's also backs onto Play Road. 
Um, I don't like it, but as Councillor Beard says, there's no material planning considerations, I think, to refuse it on, unfortunate. Thank you. Councillor Simmons, please. Thank, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, going back to the illustration that was up just now with two, two um, profiles of the building, it, it appeared one before that, um, it, that, that, that one there, it, it appears from that top picture that the garage is no longer going to be used as a garage. Is that the case? Or is it going to, it doesn't look as if it's got garage doors on the front. Yeah, it has because because the property is angled and the plans read obviously two dimensionally. You don't see the full frontage of the garage. Um, but I should have a a floor plan that I can show you, which will um, confirm that um, it is still going to be retained as a garage. Um, I'll find that for you now. So obviously you can see there on the proposed plan, the garage is still still retained. I didn't think I'd need that plan, so I didn't download it to the presentation. <laughs> I think so it's just Simmons a trick. Did that deliberately. Yeah, it's just a trick <laughs> of the eye with the with the elevation drawing that's taken two dimensionally that doesn't show you the the front doors. Yeah, he hasn't attended the two D course. Okay, Councillor Marchington, please. Could you put it back onto the view, looking at the drive again, please? Yeah, that's, that's the one. Now, if you look at the garage there, you'll, you've got the view of the trees behind. This this has been built to sort of put the, like the larger houses and to give a, a rural effect. And and when you look at the plan on page 46, as you'll notice there's about a third of the build of these dwellings being built with this offset garage. And this is gets a view, they all get a view of trees behind. And what and what would tend to happen here, you'll just lose the rural effect. And I think that's such a shame. And as Councillor Beard says, the, uh, the, there's no contractor who can control it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, members, I don't see anybody else indicating. So, those in favour of the officer recommendation? Those against? And abstentions. That's 11, 4, 3 against, and 1 abstention. So permission is granted, subject to the issue of the decision notice. Thank you, members. We now move on to um, part three of the agenda, um, item 3 1, which is a 2 1 oblique of 5 0 3 2 1 9 oblique full. And again, I thank the officer for summary and um, any updates? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, there's no update for members. I'll just bring the details up. OK, so this is an application um, that's been reported for refusal. Members will note that um, the planning committee had previously uh, refused a similar scheme um, for the site. Uh, I think it was in April this year, um, which had a slightly larger ridge, ridge line. Um, what we have is uh, existing dwelling here within the built confines of Minster 
and a double garage located to the front of the building. Uh, the property um, slopes down from the road um, and the garage is essentially a single storey structure with a, a gable roof. The proposal is to extend the garage closer to Brecon Chase, the, the road itself here, um, extends um, just under four metres further towards the road. And the proposal also seeks to increase the ridge line of the roof by approximately 1.2 metres and to create dormer windows in the roof space. And um, uh, the, the accommodation will retain a double garage, but the remainder of the accommodation um, that would be built would provide an ex accommodation. In terms of the difference between the uh, scheme that's previously refused and this scheme, um, this is the drawing of the previous scheme. And if I toggle between the two, you'll see that there's a relatively small difference in the ridge height of the roof, which is approximately 500 mils. And this is the garage in question. This is the picture taken from Brecon Chase itself. You see there's a degree of landscaping at the front. Um, you've got the slope up to the road. That's the main property. And then this is a picture taken from the road. Um, it's essentially across the neighbour's garden and you can see the existing property here. Um, and that the proposal will increase the height of the property by just over one metre and extend the roof across here towards the, the roadside. Um, officers consider that the scheme is still harmful um, and has an unacceptable visual impact um, given its proximity to the road and um, we would maintain that this hasn't overcome the previous reasons for refusal and recommend refusal of this scheme as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Byrne. Uh, members, just before I move the officer recommendation, um, I, I kind of just wanted to, to let you all know that um, Councillor John Stanford um, had originally registered to speak this evening, um, but due to Minister Parish Council's planning meeting, he was unable to, um, to attend and unfortunately we haven't got his input. Um, but, you know, yet again, in the previous application, uh, we called in by a parish council and, uh, and no representation. And as I've said a thousand times, without exaggerating, um, it is so frustrating when that happens. Um, but at least on this occasion, um, there appears to have been um, some kind of intention to, uh, to engage. So therefore, I now move the officer recommendation. Could I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Jays. Members. Councillor Martin, please. Uh, quite agree with the officers on this one. Um, I mean, I'm not being funny to the applicant here, but it wouldn't have taken a lot of common sense to think go down the slope rather than up it when we said being close to the road was part of the problem in the first place. Um, yeah, the officers are right. Let's just go with it. Thank you. Councillor Beer, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a clarification question from Mr. Byrne, if I can. Um, I couldn't see it in the report. I just wondered, after the previous refusal, did the applicant engage with the council at all, or did they just slap in this application? The short answer is I don't know. Um, I can I can check that um, if you think that might help. But um... I, I, I was just wondering wh whether they sought any advice at all, or whether they just listened to the committee and then submitted this application on the basis of the, the comments that they heard. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure we haven't given any positive um, advice that this would have been acceptable. To be fair, I would, I would hope not looking at, um, at what we've uh, had in front of us this evening. Thank you. Members, anybody else? OK. So those in favour of the officer recommendation for refusal. Thank you, those against. And abstentions, please. So that's 14 for one abstention, so permission uh, is refused. 
Thank you, members. We now move on to um, part five. Any comments, Councillor Beard? All, all yes, uh, I didn't even look. All, <laughs> all in all, it's a pretty terrible reading on all three. Um, but personally, the one that really gets me is the 5.3 lays down. So it previously got refused and for a single dwelling, which was, and one of the reasons was lack of amenity space. And it's now been approved for two flats with the same amount of amenity space, but you've now got potentially two families moving in rather than one. Um, frankly, the inspector is balmy. I, I can't, every time I look at these, I cannot understand where they're coming from half the time. Um, because two inspectors have looked at this, admittedly different applications, and they've completely come to bewildering, contradictory conclusions. Yeah, it does beg a belief. All right, members, I don't see anybody else indicating, so we've got through the business fairly quickly. I think it's a record for me, so I'm very happy at that. It's perhaps it closed back some of those midnight jobs that we had <laughs> in the early days. But um, thank you all very much for your indulgence. Uh, safe journey home and look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, members. And, uh, and officers, of course.